you guys welcome back to the show this is an exciting day uh, and you guys might be wondering you know what wh how could you call this an exciting day Marcus you're in a Volvo could you think of a more boring car manufacturer a manufacturer that over the years has been known for and it's worked out extremely well for them but they are known for one thing and one thing only and that is safety That was until, until they came out with the Volvo 850R back in the 90s. And you guys may remember uh, a very early video we did. One of the first people I talked to on the channel in the car scene had a Volvo 850R. And I'll never forget, he described the acceleration in that car. He said, I think he said, it pulls like a freight train. Okay, boxy Volvo, turbocharged, you know, a couple bolt-ons. Whatever you can do with a Volvo without blowing the engine, and it pulls like a freight train. And I think that's exactly what this wagon speaks to me. When I look at one of these wagons, today I'm driving a V70R, which is the generation after the 850R, the car that replaced the 850R, and that's exactly what this is. So it's got a 2.5 liter, five cylinder engine under the hood, uh, and here the V70R was kind of the first modern looking, non-boxy uh, Volvo performance station wagons. It's, this is, this is a bit of a sleeper. 5,000 RPM, 6,000. Yeah, it's fast. It's smooth too. I've got the active chassis setting in comfort here. So that is one of the things that the V70 was fitted with from the factory. This is a 2004 model. They made the R from 04 to 07. They didn't make a lot of them. They did not make a lot of them, okay? Is this the last, and not to mention actually, this was basically the last performance Volvo station wagon that's really genuinely Swedish. That was really one of the last authentic what I would call, call authentically engineered Volvo station wagons before they were bought by Ford uh, for about 10 years. So this is just before then, which is really cool. It's got a six speed manual here. They only made, I believe about 3,400 of these uh, in the entire production span between uh, 2004 and 2007. 300 pound feet or thereabout is absolutely no joke. I mean. The torque from a 3,000 RPM roll-on. Wow! <laughs> it's really fast! I mean, it's, it feels much quicker in a straight line than an E46 M3. Hands down, without question. Forced induction gives you that, of course, when the turbo spools up and you get that torque rush, but... Sounds not overwhelming either. Even with the resonator delete here, sounds great though. The five cylinders are just awesome. And even just on the street here, you know, if you're not pushing it nine tenths or 10 tenths, not finding understeer. And it just yanks you out of the corner. Steering's a little bit light. I wish there was more feel in the steering. Yeah, the shifter is somewhere in between not good and great. It's It falls somewhere in there. You know, quick revving so you can actually nail the downshifts really well. That's one good thing about it. There's really good clutch feel here. Better than most, you know, Hondas at the same time period. And I love the way this shifter looks here. This is just so cool. You can never really tell if these are automatic or manual. So the owner of this car, Michael, had it dynoed. Now, I'm kind of wishing that he wouldn't have told me this beforehand because I would have got in this car and been like <laughs> absolutely blown away by the power. Factory, this came with about 300 horsepower at the crank. Now, Michael's been adding in about 10% ethanol. He got it on a dyno. It's all-wheel drive, of course. Haldex all-wheel drive. This thing put down 290 wheel horsepower. 
real horsepower on a Mustang dyno. Just a resonator delete, a catted downpipe, not even catless. And that's it. That's it. No, there was, no, there was nothing going on further with that list. That is all. I mean, the torque is ridiculous. So unique having a five-cylinder engine here. I absolutely love it. As far as an enthusiast wagon, I would call this absolutely a sleeper. This is a sleeper. It's not too loud, but it has such a nice tone to it. It's not uh, some of the older four-cylinder engines that are still really reliable. You can tune them up, turbocharge them, add boost. One thing I have heard about this engine uh, is that the because it's not the older in the first gens, I believe some of them had either a 2.3 or a 2.4 liter, uh, and the block's basically the same here, the 2.5, but it's been bored out. So the actual measurements and the uh, space between the cylinders is incredibly thin. So the cylinder walls are prone to cracking. That's just what I've heard. Please comment down below uh, if you've had any experience with that. You might be thinking 300 horsepower or 290 in this case at the wheels is not a lot of horsepower, especially in a vehicle that weighs about 3,700 pounds. This is not a light vehicle, okay? So default sending power to the front wheels, except when exiting a corner and accelerating out of a corner. This just yanks you out of corners. So much grip here. And then I'm still in comfort mode too. I'm driving really cautious right now because it, I just did pass a uh, road closed sign. But I always have a little bit of apprehension. I have a little bit of skepticism when I see a road closed sign and see a detour. So, I mean, the road looks fine thus far. It's got some really good corners here. It's not torn up or anything yet, but I mean, yeah, there's no one here. The road looks fine. <laughs> road looks fine to me. That's why you gotta drive and figure it out. Find out for yourself. Oh, now it's actually closed. Okay, that is that is a cement barrier. Okay. It's actually kind of cool though, because the fun part with the corners is still open. Oh, wow. Now, I, I feel like most people who own Volvo station wagons uh, or performance Volvos, the R designation, which I love, by the way, there's every enthusiast. If you see an R in the grill, regardless of the car, you're like, hmm. R, that's an aggressive letter. <laughs> if there was such a thing, you automatically know that it's got some spice to it. And Volvo did more than just add a bigger turbocharger. You know, this does have variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust. Of course, it does have the adjustable suspension, which might I add, going back to the fact that this was the last kind of authentic Swedish built Volvo performance station wagon, the dampers here were built alongside Olin's in Sweden, which is awesome. Olin's, of course, makes some of the highest performing dampers on the market, uh, and they were tuned here for Volvo. So for a car that at the time was slated to go up against the E46 M3, It has a lot of things going for it. It's got the four piston Brembos up front. It's got 235s all around, a lot of grip. Not so much in comfort. In comfort, you really notice the body roll. Sport, it hasn't completely gone away, but there's enough of a change there to really notice it. We'll go in advanced here. Wow. Stiff, incredibly stiff. We'll go back into sport here. Have a little bit less of a jarring ride. Oh, the steering changes up, absolutely. In sport mode. Uh, but it is drive-by-wire. It is drive-by-wire. I believe the first generation V70 in 96, uh, that's when they introduced drive-by-wire. So that was already gone. They were ahead of their time in terms of that, but I'm glad they kept the hydraulic power steering here. Full snow tires, we're rocking the five spoke 17s. A lot of fives here, five cylinder, five spoke. It's a five door. Unfortunately, this one has not been fitted. 
with the rear facing third row seats in the back, which I have very fond memories of. You've got everything you need. There's a bunch of quirks here, right here. If I pull out this pen from the glove box, <laughs> a couple of weird things on the interior here, but it's got a pen clip here, this little rubbery kind of malleable tab here that you can stick your pen under because Volvo owners like to take notes and be official and be on the dot and be, uh, you know, abide by their schedule. <laughs> Not too much going on here, all black, which I love. These seats, these are absolutely blowing my mind. So comfortable. But it, you, you really need to drive Volvos. Like most people I know don't know much about Volvos. Uh, and it's one of those manufacturers where like, uh, when I think of Volvo, of course you think of safety. And then I think, I start, I was thinking about build quality and I'm like, well, I don't really know. Like, I think they're fairly reliable engineering wise, but as far as build quality materials go, I'm like, okay, it's an acceptable interior here. Uh, there are some rattles. I'm definitely, especially when you put on the advanced uh, active chassis mode, as it's called for the suspension, you do hear a few rattles. This is a high mileage example. So that might have something to do with it. But other than that, it feels, it feels really solid. It just, you know, it, it. it's kind of sad though. It is kind of sad because this five cylinder, aluminum block, aluminum head, just like Audi's five cylinder, but this one kind of got just kind of tossed off to the wayside. It is all wheel drive, but it is not an Audi. It's not a BMW, but that's why you should pay attention to it. That's why you should pay attention to it. I think this is one of the last great analog wagons from Europe. I don't think it's prominent and I, I, you know, and I can understand why. I can understand why it's not the most exciting. It doesn't have that raspy flavor to it. It doesn't have the most engaging shifting feel, right? To get a wagon, I mean, they've disappeared. They are dinosaurs, why? Why have they gone? They're, they're so useful, they're so great. And they look so much better. They're so much better at handling corners. There's so much more confidence in the corners. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a 2004 Volvo V70R. Not a car I would traditionally be interested in, but a car that I've wanted to drive for so long. Anyways, you can follow me on Instagram at Roads Untraveled. See what we're shooting coming up here. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We didn't understeer off the road. It's one degree Celsius outside, just above freezing. But that has been the V70R. We'll see you guys next time.